Alright, so welcome to this video. In this video, you will learn how to configure Microsoft Dynamics 365 settings. So you will learn about the entire setting structure here and what are the components that you can configure inside Dynamics 365 settings. Now, this is the one time activity that you need to do to make sure that the application is working as per the requirements, right? So uh, I'm going to explain you that in detail and I will show you practically on how it works as well. So let's start. So first thing we will learn is configuring auditing. Now, whatever you are, I'm going to teach you in this training video and training course is directly related to the certification exam, as well as you will learn about the concepts and you will be able to practice that in your environment. So we'll start with the configuring auditing. So first let's understand what is auditing. So it means that if you want to keep track of all the changes that anybody is doing on a particular field on a form, then you can track that. So if somebody is updating the value of the field, then you will know that what was the old value, what is the new value, who changed it and when it was changed, right? So those things you will know through the auditing process and that can be enabled. I'm going to explain you how it can be enabled and show you the practical demo as well. So what are the operations and data can be audited? Number one, you will be able to audit the operations like create when you create a record, update a record or delete a record, right? So any operation that you do will follow the auditing trail. Also, any changes to the shared privileges of a record. So in case if the shared privileges of the record have been changed, then you will be able to track using auditing. Also, in case if there is any end to end relationship or de-association of records, for example, end to end relationship is nothing but many to many relationships, which you will learn in the later modules. Or if you have any association of the records, if you disassociate a record, then you will know that it has been done for a particular record. So that can be audited. And in case if you do any changes to the security roles, the audit changes at the entity. In case if you change anything at the entity level, attribute level or at the organization level. So that can be tracked. And also deletion of the audit log. So who deleted the audit log and when it was deleted, right? So everything you can keep track of using auditing. And also like when a user accesses Dynamics 365 data, for how long and from what client. So, you know, once you enable auditing, you will be able to keep track of entire things that I'm explaining you here. But auditing is not considered to enable for everything because once you start doing it, it starts creating logs. And when there are a lot of logs available for the particular entity, then you know, the application performance may go down and you might face issues in, um, in accessing the application or you might face the issue in slow performance. So you need to make sure that you enable auditing only for the entities and fields that you want to keep track of, right? I hope it's very, very clear. So let's see how can you do that. So how you can enable auditing in Dynamics 365? Number one, you can first enable the auditing at the organization level, right? So you can enable the auditing for the organization, then enable auditing for the entities. Okay, so first enable auditing for Dynamics 365 instance, and then you enable auditing for the each entity. So you go to each entity individually and under the areas, you can enable that auditing feature and then enable auditing for the fields, which is inside entity. Okay, so what you can do, you can go to settings, administration, system settings and auditing tab. So this is how it works. You can enable this here and then you can start with the next process of configuring that on entity level as well as on the field level. So let's see that inside the application. All right, so I am in Dynamics 365. So let's go to settings and under settings administration. And here I'm just going to click on system settings. So under system settings, you have auditing tab and there you can enable the audit and the other activities. So first to start the auditing process, you can just enable this checkbox called start auditing. And as soon as you enable this checkbox, you can see that all the other checkbox are, are available to check and enable, right? So the first one is audit user access. It means the person who has accessed the Dynamics 65, how long and everything will be recorded. And then you have enable auditing for the following areas. So currently you have common entities, sales entities, marketing entities and customer service entities. So in case if you want to know what exactly will happen if you enable this common entities, you can just hover your mouse and you will see the 
details of the entities that this area has so common entities are account contact goal goal matrix lead marketing list product quick campaign report and you can see the list and currently the status is disabled as you can see here right if you go to sales entities you will see the sales related entities and once you enable this sales entities checkbox the auditing will be enabled for these entities right and similarly you have marketing and then you have customer service now in case if you don't want to enable the auditing for all you can just enable this start auditing section and just click ok okay so it means at the organization level the auditing is initiated now you can go to each entity for example you can go to account and you can enable that uh, auditing manually in that particular entity okay so that you can do you can enable that at the individual entities or you can also enable here where it is going to enable auditing for the combination or the group of entities right so uh, i'm just going to leave it as it is but in case if you want to do it quickly you can just enable this and click ok ok so i'm just going to do that at the entity level so i'll just click ok now the auditing is enabled at the organization level now let's go to customizations and we'll go to entity so click on customizations and customize the system ok it has been loaded now i'll just go to entities and click on the account entity now when you click on the account entity it opens the properties so you can just scroll down and here you have an option of enable auditing under data services okay so you can just click enable auditing and it says that by default all fields of this entities are enabled for auditing choose the fields tab to enable or disable specific fields for auditing right so you can just do that and you can save now the entity is enabled for auditing the next step you can do is you can go to the fields so you can just expand this account entity and click fields it will show you all the fields that are available so for example if i want to just open this field called account number i'm just going to double click that and here you can see that auditing is enabled for that so you can just disable it if you don't want it to audit this field now it is very very important to understand that when you enable auditing on an entity it enables for all fields as we discussed so if it's enabled for all the fields then you know for every action it is going to audit and it is going to create a log and when it creates a log it is going to reduce the performance of the application so it's very important to know that only a specific fields you should enable auditing so i'm just going to click disable and just click save and close so now we have successfully disabled the auditing for this entity similarly you can do it for all entities i'm just going to close it so if in case if you want to do it for multiple fields then you can just select all those fields like this okay and click edit now it is going to show you the common properties of all the fields right so currently you can see the auditing it either you can enable auditing for all those fields or disable auditing so we can just go ahead and disable and click save so the auditing for these four fields have been disabled now in case if you want to do it for all the entities you can just enable this check all records and it has selected all the 50 fields similarly you can do it for all the pages okay and then you will have the auditing disabled for all the fields available and then just focus on a couple of fields for which you want to enable the auditing right so that's the best way to work with this so once you are done with this just click publish all customizations okay and once all the customizations are published it means all the changes that you have done in uh, the accounts entity for the fields it is now enabled like it is now in effect so uh, all you can do is you can just close down you can open the account entity so go to sales accounts and open any record for example alpine ski house and in there let's make some change so instead of the phone number last zero i'll just change it to one okay so we'll just make a simple change and save it so you can press ctrl s to save the record and now let's see the impact so we'll click on this component here and then audit history and here you can see that update phone number 
Now once we enable the audit history, you will see that audit enabled and then um, it also shows that audit started and then whatever the audit you have stopped, it shows that plus whatever actions you are performing, it shows that as well. Now in case if you make other changes, it is going to keep track of all those changes. So this way you can enable the audit history and keep track of all the changes that are happening and it also shows like who has done the changes, what is the event and the date of the change. So this way you can enable audit tracking for any entity and you can start keeping the track of the changes that has been done. One more important thing that you should consider when you're working with auditing is you go to the settings and under system you can click on auditing and there you can see the detailed log so you have audit log management as well as the summary view for all the records now what process i've shown you before it's possible to see for each record but if in case if you want to see all the uh, changes that has been happened in a single screen then audit summary view is the place to go so let's see that so here you can see all the changes that has been done and uh, it basically shows what record has been changed, who changed it and what was the event and the date of change, right? And that's something you can review in case if you want to see what exactly had been changed because it doesn't show you here. All you can do is just click on the event and then it shows you that, okay, the field that has been changed, what is the old value, what is the new value, okay? And everything else you can see here that who has changed, the time of change and the record and what operation was performed. Right, so this way you can start using auditing and you can see auditing in a single screen using audit summary view. And here you have audit log management. So here you can see all the logs that are available. In case if you want to delete the logs, you can just select and you can just delete the logs. Right, but uh, it's recommended to keep the logs in case if you want to see them later. Another thing you can do is you can change the global audit settings organization level as we have done that before you can also go from this screen so you can click on global audit settings and the same screen will open system settings and under that you can see those changes right and here you have entity and field audit settings it basically opens the solution and there you can go to any entity you can enable that entity for auditing as well as you can change the fields properties of auditing right so this way you can work with auditing inside dynamics 365 so that's it for this topic and uh, let's move to the next topic